can you can you play a, a solo like right here and then we he recorded some just some stupid uh, suggestions I forgot to tell uh, our management about it so we we just sent them the vocal demo and and they were like wow that solo the guitar solo is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> So I have the wonderful Grutel Kjelson from Enslaved with me tonight. How are you, Grutel? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. Uh, yeah, shitty weather and uh, yeah, usual, uh, usual uh, West Coast winter, which, is, which basically means a little rain, 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 and wind. So, <laughs> so um, I'll I'll jump straight into Heimdall. So. First off, could you kind of explain the concept behind Heimdall? Because I know it's kind of multi-layered. Is that correct? It is, uh, and it's um, it's one of the uh, well. He, he's a god in the, in, from the Norse mythology, uh, first and foremost. Uh, well, it, that, that's his most uh, <laughs> that's the most well-known side of Heimdall. Uh, kind of. Uh, Enigmatic figure, figure really, uh, because you can find traces of him uh, like way before uh, there were something called Norse mythology. Uh, but but you can find uh, his forerunners in uh, rock carvings that dates uh, like three and a half thousand years back. Uh, so he was probably worshipped uh, in some form, uh, like. Thousands, well, maybe a thousand years before, before the Iron Age, before the Viking Age. So his uh, origins are uh, kind of cloudy and shrouded, uh, which makes it uh, everything uh, really fascinating. Uh, so it was a, a bit of a puzzle too, uh, uh, and it's a lot, of, lot, lot of digging into to kind of uh, set the framework for 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 the concept and and start. Uh, writing about the, the this figure and, and uh, what he means to us uh, to our, our psychology uh, contemporary psychology uh, and uh, what he has meant for people on the scandinavian peninsula really really fascinating uh, i guess some scholar friends of us were pretty pretty annoyed by the end because of all these emails and phone calls and uh, texts and <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting though because it sounds like you can have multiple interpretations of what Heimdall could could mean essentially yes I, I mean even within the frames of of, of uh, sagas the, the Norse mythology the written material even there uh, there's uh, certain discrepancies <laughs> about his uh, origins <laughs> and and, and uh, scholars means uh, you know they have their differences uh, when it comes to him though yeah which is really fascinating you know because <laughs> because you, you you never know but but i mean uh, and still uh, that figure is really really important you know as the guardian of, of, of the of the rainbow bridge as guardian uh, as, as he represents order that guards us against chaos and uh, mm -hmm. still uh some scholars uh, uh suggests that he is actually uh chaos he comes from chaos he is like a half giant so someone suggests so some some even some written material suggests that uh, while someone uh, suggests he's uh, he's of a Vanir god origin, and someone suggests that he is uh, uh, both the son of Odin and Odin himself. Oh wow! So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the the whole Heimdall concept. It's uh, really layered to, to begin with, and and uh, it wasn't an easy task to to uh, write stories about it. But it was really, really fascinating. I, yeah, I can imagine, you know, I think that the eclecticism of Heimdall, the record 
you know, represents that kind of eclectic nature of what Heimdall represents. There's so much going on between, you know, I think the the many years there's been a kind of duality in Enslaved. And I feel like this is kind of like where it becomes the conduit between the two. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, the musical uh, horizon has become uh, quite broad. So there's, uh, well, th- there's a lot of, uh, I-, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it loose ends, but there's a lot of uh, ends uh, going somewhere. I think we managed to tie them together in the end. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was, <laughs> uh, when I first uh, heard the demos uh, on some of the songs, I was like, okay, okay, uh, <laughs> I need to, I need to listen to these a lot. To be able to start working on them, to figure out what to sing over them and and what to write over them, that was really fascinating. It, it was almost like you know some some of my favorite albums is is the albums that I absolutely don't get the first time I listen to them, not even the second or the third time. Things that have to mature uh, is usually usually becomes my my favorites and. Uh, it was the same with this album. I mean, it, it had to mature. I had to repeat, repeatedly listen to to like uh, maybe parts of the sections of the songs. Uh, yeah, basically figuring out what to sing over the individual uh, sections of the songs. And yeah, mm-hmm. it, it was it was fantastic. It was it was, it was fantastic material to to work with. And uh, I think we, I, I think I, I'm really proud of the result. I think it's. It, it is a strong album. It's a good effort. Uh, and we had time to do so because there was a, something called a, a pandemic going on. It's, But it's very interesting because, you know, <laughs> and not, not trying to say this to anger anyone or anything like that, but I was the same. When I first heard Congelia, I was like, don't know if I get this, but now <laughs> it's like one of it's it's like without a doubt, Heimdall is one of my favorite enslaved albums. But you're right, it takes time because you have all yeah, these. Yeah. Yeah. Congelia, I was like, I I was kind of the same. Um, I just had a feeling when I heard it the first time, and but I mean that that song has so, it's cool because it's like it's, it's so two faced. It's like <laughs> seemingly a, a primitive song, but there's so many yeah. layers and so many different stuff going on in inside uh, the seemingly primitive frame. Uh, I think that, that song is really, really fascinating and it's a really cool song to perform. It happens something all the time. Yeah. And seemingly, seemingly not. So, so it's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super fascinating song. I, I love that song. So I, I want to ask about, uh, you know, the, the opening track as well, because I know that you went out uh, in in a, a boat of yours, I think it was. So um, what was it kind of that made you want to capture that moment, you know, with the with the horn being blown? Because there's, there's so much stillness in that, that I really think it's such a a great launching point off into the chaos yeah. that is Heimdall. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it, it kind of connects with the, with the, I told you about um, Heimdall's uh, origin as, as, as a historical, not, not an historical person, but uh, as a um, uh, religious figure uh, that has been for, for like uh, thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And, so that horn you hear in the beginning of uh, of, of uh, behind the mirror is it, like it, it's, it's a replica of a of a Bronze Age horn they found in a in a bog in Denmark. Uh, I think it was dated three thousand three hundred years old. Uh, so they made a couple of replicas of all of that, and uh, our friend Alif from uh, Valdruna has got, uh, got one of those and. Uh, so uh, I've got a couple of boats in a, in a lake just nearby my house. And we went out there to a, a small island. And basically we put Alif on a rock. And we, uh, me and Håkon, we uh, were paddling my canoe. <laughs> around, 
to kind of simulate uh, because they only had like paddling vessels in the Bronze Age. They had no they had no rowing boats, so the only way they could actually uh, travel on lakes, rivers, or, or uh, yeah, the sea was like by paddling. Oh wow! So they were just paddling vessels. But the funny thing, uh, a friend of mine. He was like standing on the shore. Uh, I think it was uh, maybe four or five hundred meters meters away from from the island, and he said when Ailet was blowing that horn, it was like it just became louder and louder and louder. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, whole, the whole small settlement uh, where I live was like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was it was really really loud. Uh, yeah, and it was totally, totally a goosebump moment because it, it it was so massive. We we don't know exactly what these horns were uh, used for, but I mean, uh, some kind of summoning. It, it, yeah. it, it definitely was, well, and yeah. So they were, it was kind of reconnecting with the whole origins of Heimdall. So uh, oh, it was it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Was it, so I'd, I've often wondered as well on the final track the the Heimdall track is the I think it's like the last sort of like 30 seconds before that sort of uh, synthesizer fades out it sounds like there's another horn yeah, the same that's uh, from the same from the same session yeah, yeah. oh really yeah yeah, yeah yeah oh wow that's so cool man I love so that so you got it right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I just <laughs> kind of um you know the continuity between the two because it is that sort of duality um but you know talking about um the past and the present and future as well I know that you had a lot of your friends record messages you know that they would say to the, their future selves but what message would you record if you could record a, a message to your future self it, it's not necessarily about having a, a certain goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the, the goal is rather uh, the path to the goal. Uh, be, continuing be, be, being curious. I mean, uh, don't be don't be lazy and don't 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 try to copy something you have done before. But don't do not be your own tribute band. <laughs> because of when <laughs> continue to continue to explore that, that that's what i've what i've said to my future self <laughs> that's great i just, yeah. I just had to i just had to elaborate a little bit so <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's great man you know i, I think of, you are continually exploring like utgard i thought was kind of you know pretty prog and then heimdall comes out and you're like Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it, it was well, yeah, it, it was proggy, uh, but it was it had certain elements of of classic rock. I think uh, yeah. in in the song structure, at least, even in the riffs. Uh, well, well, Heimdall is, is a little bit more. It's a bit more trippy. Yeah. It's a bit more. We had some trippy parts on on Utgard, man. Maybe this is a continuation of that. It's more, it's more, uh, it's more child rock oriented. Mm. I think more, more um, longer instrumental sections and 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 more, uh, yeah, more, more 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 trippy, more more dangerous, maybe. So mm. it, it's it really we went. To, back uh, a bit on, and, and listen to those old Tangerine Dream albums, Klaus Schulze, Kraftwerk, stuff like that. Yeah. Really atmospheric stuff. And uh, those bands, I mean, they, they are just as crucial for, for Enslaved uh, as, as, as bands like Bathory and May and really. Has it has it always kind uh, of been the case that they're they're quite crucial to, to you guys or is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Just just listen to our debut album, Vikingly uh, of I mean, mm. there's like long 
passages that are really, really cult uh, rock. And, and and back then we were like, uh, we had a really, really, really uh, long period of time, actually, where we basically listened to Tangerine Dream and, and Klaus Schulze and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it has been there for more than 30 years, that fascination of it. Of that particular music scene, yeah, yeah. I think more people should listen listen to that because, like, oh, it's super dreamy. Uh, on, on, on. Yeah, it just it expands yeah. your mind as well. I think you know, yeah, like, it, 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 know. it it really does. It, it really makes you think. I mean, uh, it it might seemingly be like slow and repetitive, but that that's not the, uh, uh, the intention. It make, makes you mind expand which is really really important when you uh as a listener to music you're supposed to connect with something one way one way or the other music is about uh taking you somewhere mm -hmm. yeah it, almost yeah. like a, a trance like thing mm. absolutely I, 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 I get that with enslaved as well you know like i think especially this album like we were saying with congelia it's just it's interesting because as much as it is looking incredibly forward, it's also, I feel like, the most black metal that you guys have sounded for quite some time. Yeah, that might, yeah, that might be... Uh, is that a coincidence or is it, is it not? <laughs> it's really hard to pinpoint <laughs> yourself. But uh, yeah, maybe it is. Uh, um, well, I think the, the drums... The drum patterns uh, are, are really like old school, old school extreme, old school black metal, definitely because it's like it's like not not blast pieces, it's just like uh, it's like uh, mid tempo, tiring, and uh, it, we call it. Uh, something uh, we we call it <laughs> in Norwegian. We call it langrenspinne, which means cross cross country tempo <laughs> 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 yeah cross, cross country blasting but that but, you know that kind of goes back to that meditative state because you do kind of like you just kind of i don't know you just kind of vibe with it and then just go off to a higher plane yeah it, it, totally i mean i mean uh and Back to the back to the uh, to the repet repetitive uh, and uh, often electronic uh, mm. cult rock. Uh, that was one of the most, uh, let's say, for people like Ace and Orset, Euronymous of Mayhem. I mean, he he was a huge, huge fan of that kind of, kind of music. He was a huge Kraftwerk, Kurschulz, uh, Neu fan. Uh, so he was like, he had probably. Um, and, and and people, I mean, back then in in, in the early nineties, uh, uh, most of the bands really listened to a lot of experimental uh, music from the seventies. Really, I mean, and 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 that's like one of the let's say pillars uh, that that uh, made uh, Norwegian experimental in in in, in the early nineties. Wow. Uh, so. Uh, Experimental music was definitely, definitely one of the most important genres in the creation of, of, of this type of type of music. What was the the writing process like for this album? Because you, you say you had lots and lots of time. Was it kind of? To the point where you, were, you had too much time and you were kind of like looking no, over. it was basically like, like um, the last couple of albums Eva uh, made the um, instrumental demos mm -hmm. guitar uh, program drums uh, some bass uh, guitars even some keyboards myself I would I would uh, try, try to dis decipher what <laughs> what the hell was going on uh, <laughs> uh, making a a sketch, a plan, uh, what to to sing over over uh, me and the drummer Eva Sunday. He's got a studio, and then me and him would uh, make vocal demos and uh, 
and then prep the vocal arrangements. And this time it was like, well, we spent a couple of days uh, in a row. Like maybe we made um, demos for like one or two songs a day, mm -hmm. something like that. Usually after we have done vocal demos, we would uh, decide where to put the guitar leads. And, uh, and then we will involve Ice, Agave, uh, a little bit more. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> we even made some suggestions. Uh, I think Eva took a guitar, uh, like a Telecaster, off the wall. And, uh, mm -hmm. okay, so I made a solo suggestion. And, uh, yeah, and that was actually the guitar solo of uh, Congelia. Huh. So, yeah, can you, can, can you play a, a solo, like, right here? And then we he recorded some, just some stupid uh, suggestions. And... <laughs> We forgot to tell uh, our management about it, so we, we just sent them the vocal demo, and, and they were like, wow, that solo, the guitar solo is fantastic. <laughs> 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 that was basically just for fun. Yeah, well, that was pretty cool. And, and we ended up uh, doing a proper recording of that with a, <laughs> with a lead guitar player on lead guitar. So when we came, finally came to the to the actual recordings, uh, things were like I would say ninety five percent ready. So we could like uh, spend spend time on on uh, on details. What would you say Heimdall means to you personally, like as as an album in Enslaved's catalog and everything like that? I think each member has really really uh, given something uh, a lot of themselves all of us to be able to perform these songs it's perhaps the most signature enslaved album up to date because of the time we, we, we spent uh, writing and arranging it and so it's like i think it's i think i would say it's the most personal album for all five of us that we have ever recorded to me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a solid landmark. Uh, it's hard to to kind of uh, put them up against other milestones in in, in, in our, our career because I mean, that wouldn't be fair, uh, uh, of course. But I mean, uh, this is definitely an album that would would stand out in in twenty years uh, as well. Absolutely, maybe more than other enslaved albums as well. So I'm, I'm really, really proud. It's of course a cliche to say that this is the best <laughs> album we have ever done, but I, I seriously mean it. I seriously feel it. Yeah, and you... I seriously do that on 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 every release. So that doesn't mean <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> but I think, I, I, yeah, I really love the album, and I'm really, really, really proud of it. Good man. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a truly, truly okay. incredible album. Um, it's one hundred percent in my albums of the year. Like I've been, I've been a fan of Enslaved since uh, Vertebrae. I've got the the Vertebrae on on here. Oh wow, well, nice. Ah, wow, cool. I haven't seen many of those, but I, yeah, I've seen some. But this this is a good one. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for um, you know taking the time to chat. We really, really appreciate it, Grutel. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.